everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're gonna talk about what it's like writing a technical paper. So let's get started. Now in this video, there may not have been anyone who really asked um, what exactly it was like writing a technical paper, but I thought I would just give my thoughts on what it was like, some of the challenges I faced, some things that I didn't know of beforehand, and some mistakes or pitfalls that I've made uh, while writing the paper so that others can either learn from it or to understand exactly what's all involved with writing technical papers. But with that, I'm gonna go into it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you would like to see more videos like this. So I'm gonna start from the beginning where I was working on a project that basically integrated two different software tools so that we could have uh, more insights and visualizations into application IO behavior and patterns. Um, and basically this tool would allow for you to have runtime time series data of application IO behavior. Basically the end goal was to provide this capability for three different groups of people and we will actually include this implementation or this framework into the software tools so that users can enable it or disable it as they wish. That's just a, a general overview of what I was doing and what I was working on. And from there, we were getting runtime data of the application IO events. Um, however, we were still in the early stages, so we hadn't yet tested it with uh, real applications. We were using benchmark applications. We hadn't actually visualized this data, so we didn't graph it. We didn't see what the output would be. And we also didn't get a chance to actually test the overhead and make sure that it was working under certain conditions or if it was still working as it should across different file systems or across different platforms. A lot more testing and analyses and um, data gathering still needed to be done in order to confirm that this tool was valid and that uh, we could say, yes, we can implement this or we can include this in the actual code. However, with that being said, there was a conference happening and we usually every year have our own workshop that's part of this conference. Um, and each year we go and, and look for other papers, technical papers, proposal papers, work in progress papers, whatever it may be. We go and ask others in our group, in our um, company, whether or not they would want to participate in this workshop or if they have a new project that they would like to share and to submit a, a, a report on it. We had one later this year and one of my colleagues who's been here a lot longer than everyone else, um, he suggested that I could submit a technical paper about this work that I was doing. Um, and he thought that maybe it would be a good idea for me to do that so that I can, you know, spread the word around. Um, however, when he suggested that, I wasn't really comfortable with it because like I said earlier, a lot more things still needed to be done. But he did suggest that I could just submit a work in progress paper. And that's where you say, hey, we are still working on this tool or this framework, um, but here's what we have so far. And this paper would probably be about four pages where we just give a brief overview of how it was implemented and uh, what it does as well as what we plan for it to do. So I was all for it and I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. But um, in the back of my mind, I was thinking to myself, crap, I've never written a paper before ever in my life, not even in my master's degree. The closest thing I've written to a research paper was I think a report that kind of gave a summary of other report and then giving my own opinion on that. I forgot what it's called, but it's not a research paper. And so I really had no experience in this area. I didn't know what to do. And let's just say the first week or so after he suggested this and wanted me to do it, I just kind of shut down, so to speak. I would open up Overleaf and start my paper, but then nothing would come out because I'm like, I how do I start? Where do I start? What do I talk about? How do I explain this? What's the best way to explain it? I was also Googling like how to write technical papers, uh, what's the right format for writing a technical paper. And it, it wasn't really getting me anywhere because every technical paper is very specific to that tool or that software. So I still needed to know the background of the software tools that I was implementing. I needed to really know the steps and methodology that I was using to get this tool working the way it should. I needed to do my own research and learn, okay, uh, what did I do here? How did I do that? And then it's like, okay, how do I explain what this software tool is? Okay, and then how do I explain what this software tool is? And then I have to explain how did I implement this particular software tool into the other one and then describe all of the terms for that tool, the different functions that I used to implement it and then explain what the goal is, so the motivation behind it all. 
um, and it's just all very overwhelming at first but what really helped me in actually getting my thoughts together and writing the paper was referring to a previous uh, report that my group had done about one of the software tools that I was implementing and using. So that really helped me because in that paper it had the background and the information about that particular software tool already and it also explained the different parts that were used to implement it into this new tool and those parts that were used are the same parts that I was using for my own framework to implement into this other software tool. Those were the main differences, but because they had they were using that same software and the same, you know, API capabilities, I explained the software, followed how they did it and kind of explained it but in my own words um, what this did and then I did a similar approach in explaining how I implemented this API capability into the IO characterization tool. So that really helped with writing the paper. I was able to, you know, have something to refer to and a lot of the times, you know, you may not be able to do that. It's not possible for every paper. But that's just something I think you should really keep in mind is if you're writing your own technical paper, uh, to look for other papers that talk about the same tools that you're using or that have a similar implementation that you're doing so that you can refer to those papers and find a better way to explain it but in your own way. The other parts were just explaining the motivation and that was pretty straightforward. I just had to explain, okay, why are we doing this in the first place? Like, who's gonna benefit from it? Um, is there any other software tools or other um, similar implementations that provide the same result, which is a runtime time series of IO application data? Like, is there any other work out there similar to that? And then explain how this work was different than that work. So that was basically the bulk of the paper and I was able to write that. However, there is one section in the paper and this is the one that will take a technical paper a lot longer than it should. And it was something that I didn't even think I needed to do because I was expecting to write a short work in progress paper, but it ended up being a long one because there's just so much information for me to explain. And so when I made that decision, I didn't realize this at the time, but when you make that decision from a short to a long, you have to provide some sort of experimental methodology. And what I mean by that is provide results provide tests that you've done and proven that uh, this works. So all of that stuff that I had said earlier that we haven't even gotten to yet, which is you know gathering the data, analyzing it, running it on real applications, yeah, I had to do all of that. So that was very stressful because this submission was in like a month and a half. And I, by the time I was done with the paper, I think I only had maybe four weeks, so about a month until I needed to submit it. And so I was over here freaking out because we had to come up with our own uh, testing methodology. We had to come up with a way to test this tool and then um, analyze the data and output the data and show that, hey, these are the our new analyses that you can get and further insights into this application IO behavior. I ended up having to team up with one of my uh, coworkers. They had to help me and I felt terrible about that because they had to put in a lot of their own time to help me with this paper. They helped me basically get the applications to run and to test with and they also helped me test the overhead of this framework if there was any latency from it. Of course, you know, with everything with engineering, when you run something or you test something, you're bound to run into problems. So we ran into a lot of problems and it just took us that much longer to get the data, get the information, and then uh, we ended up finding that the results of the overhead testing and the runtime testing were inconclusive because the variance between runs were just so different. What we ended up doing is having to explain this in the paper and we did provide the results that we got and we showed the high variances between runs and we ended up having to explain that uh, we cannot say anything about these results and we need to do further investigation to validate our results. And it's something that I just wish I would have learned and, and told my other colleague who suggested it to begin with that we're not ready. Even if it's a short paper, we're just not ready. We were not ready to write this technical paper. So that's just one thing that you should definitely be aware of is if you're writing a paper, make sure that you actually have tested it and that you do have results and that you do have some sort of output of this tool or this work um, so that you can actually include it in the paper because that's going to be a requirement when you have to write a technical paper. And it was kind of embarrassing too because we had to show results that we didn't want to show that didn't look good or promising with this project. So it, that's the other thing is if you have results that are just out of whack or just random 
um, for a technical report, it's most likely going to be rejected. So all of that work you put into it will just be for nothing. You know, that's something I learned and that's something you, I hope you guys are aware of if you ever decide to write a technical paper. We were able to provide some visualizations of the data. So we were able to provide graphs and show different analyses to prove that, hey, we're getting these new insights that we've never been able to get before because of this time series runtime data. Uh, we can now see how long a write happens or how long a read happens and when it happens during the application run, which is what something we couldn't have done before. Um, so we were able to show that, and that was actually really good for the paper. And I think that was the main reason why it got accepted because we did have some sort of proof and, and evidence of um, further insights into the application behavior. Now this depends on the company where you work, but when I submitted it, I had to have like a PowerPoint slide that explained the paper and I had presented it to my colleagues uh, so that they could review it and then give their own thoughts and opinions about it. So in summary, all the things that I've learned and that I think you should be aware of if you ever write a technical paper is to make sure that your project or your framework or your tool that you're doing is almost done, if not pretty much done, um, in terms of the testing, the validation, um, the output, whatever it is, before you decide to write a technical paper. The next thing is to do your own research with your own tool. So if you ever need to write a paper, make sure to look at other papers or other research papers that uh, talk about that tool or talk about a similar approach that you used or a similar implementation and then refer to that whenever you need to write the paper. And the next, don't be afraid to say no if one of your colleagues or someone else that you work with suggests you to submit a technical paper and you're not confident in doing that. And then the last one is the testing methodology or test cases, whatever you wanna call it. That section is what's going to take you the longest to complete and to do because you have to have that testing infrastructure in place. You have to have a, a plan to test it. Um, and then test it by that plan, get those results, and then analyze all of those results. And then you go and talk about you know, what that means. That's what will take you the longest when writing a technical paper in order to prove that this tool or this framework is working and it's what you said it would be. Those are all the things I learned about writing a technical paper. Um, I know I probably explained a lot, but um, and I hope it wasn't too confusing. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys find this video helpful and useful. And if you'd like to see similar videos, please subscribe. And yeah, I hope you guys like this video and thank you for watching.